eight companies that are mentioned in here are now failed. So that was a, you know, a misnomer. But uh, all of that aside, the principles still stand. And, and you know, probably the, uh, there, there's several different things that are taught in here that you absolutely need to apply in your company. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I mentioned that. John Maxwell's best book, as far as I'm concerned. John's a friend of mine, but this is a this is New York Times bestseller. It's the book that sold the most of his, but there's a reason. It's got more meat and potatoes in it. I mean, there's more mechanical stuff in here than anything else he did. And, you know, law number three is that leadership lid. Of all the processes in here. These are just great, great reading. Uh, Thou Shalt Prosper, absolutely mandatory. This is my book I was talking about by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. I mentioned it last night or yesterday afternoon. Absolutely incredible. This thing will change the way you look at business. One of the things I love that he does in here, he just talks about capitalism. Somebody gave me a cartoon this morning. It said uh, two little kids standing in. One of the kids calls the other kid a capitalist, and the other kid screams and says, you just, you can call me a dirty word. And, uh, you know, that's where it's got to be. Capitalism is not a dirty word. The problem is, in our culture, we've got our terms confused. Capitalism implies moral restraint. Where there is no moral restraint, you don't have capitalism, you have anarchy. And that's what we've been seeing, is some levels of anarchy in, in the business world, where people just run loose with absolutely nothing restraining their behaviors. Capitalism implies moral restraint, not legal restraint. And where there's no moral restraint, capitalism gets a black eye. It starts to look bad. And people say, oh, well, we need more regulation on Wall Street. We don't need more regulation on Wall Street. Regulation on Wall Street is part of where we are. It's called sarbanes oxalate and it sucks beyond belief. We've got a friend that has an organization right now that's publicly traded. It's a silly little company that makes about $100 million a year. It's a tiny little company for a publicly traded company. They spend $6 million a year on legal fees trying to meet the regulatory guidelines for Sarbanes-Oxley. Out of $100 million, they spend 6% of their gross revs just trying to meet regulations. And then he's, as a CEO, he's still personally liable for everything that happens in a $100 million company. It's absolutely absurd. So that, that regulation doesn't solve it. What solves it is people having morals, doing the right thing. And that's how capitalism got to where it is in terms of good, the good things that capitalism has done is with moral restraint. So Rabbi talks about stuff like that in here. One of the things he says is, he says, if you have a dollar bill in your hands, you know what a dollar bill is? It's a certificate of appreciation from your customer. <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, it's kind of like Ken Blanchard says, he says, profit is the applause your customers give you. That's the way capitalism is supposed to work. Where you're serving your customers, you're loving them well with products and services, you're fair to them, you don't gig them, you don't take advantage of them, you're not out of control. But we have always had a segment of the culture that's out of control, and they'll take advantage of people, and oppresses people. You know, the payday lender is out there, just rips off poor people. That kind of stuff. That that's what gives capitalism a black eye when that kind of person goes out there and just you know takes advantage of people. Well, it's freedom. They ought to be allowed to do what they want to do. Yeah, they ought to be allowed to do what they want to do legally, but there ought to be moral restraint.